Hey now, welcome to episode 6 of CRV123 on Whip Tips. In this episode, we're going to go over how to remove your front struts. Remember, we've gotten to the point in this video where we've basically removed the steering knuckle, we've removed the lower control arms, we've done a lot. I think the only things left in our front wheel wells are the axles and the old... Um, tie rod ends for uh, steering connected to your rack and pinion steering. Other than that, everything's gone except the struts and we're going to take them out, put new springs on them and uh, show you how to lift your front end two inches. Now, there are going to be two episodes associated with this. One is how to do it using a Honda Rescue Garage kit. The other is how to use Dobinson springs. This one is about how to use that HRG a spacer, the two inch spacer on your front end, but it should apply to any spacer from Honda Rescue Garage. So let's get into the bluegrass. All right, look, y'all, it's time to get serious about tools. Now, for this job, you're definitely going to need these. These are McPherson Strut um, spring compressors, and you can rent these from any auto store. I always rent them. I've never bought one of these, so this is something I definitely recommend renting. But beyond that, like, you know, the, you, at this point, I'm not the kind of person who's going to say to you, hey, you can do this with household tools, etc." I think I've said that in multiple videos. I do not subscribe to that kind of... Um, that kind of thought process and that approach to, to DIY on automobiles. In some cases, that's true, but it's always easier and better when you have the proper tools. And for this one, you're going to need, I, I highly recommend you get a set of these uh, combination wrenches, crow's foot on one side and ratchets on the other. In this case, we're working on a Honda, so I suggest metric. I also suggest that you get one of these, which is basically, look, everybody should have a, a set of sockets and, um, and a good um, wrench to go with them, a good socket wrench to go with them. Three eighths you'll need. Um, there are a bunch of different kinds of three eighths, long, short, uh, the kind with the rotate, not rotating, but uh, bendable head. Um, and, you know, you, and then there's the standard, you know, basic, basically solid one piece um, wrench. Uh, whatever floats your boat, uh, each of those has their role and purpose. But at, at, at the beginning, at least start with some, you know, range of socket, um, imperial and metric sockets, plus a good three eighths inch driver socket wrench. Uh, you're going to need a half inch wrench and so and a half inch driver in some cases, get yourself a cheater bar too, while you're at it. Um, the more tools you have, the easier it's going to be torque wrench. You have to torque things down. Some people are happy with just going to the guten tight, uh, you know, uh, kind of setting, but, um, Look, I like to torque things when I can. There are times when I can't reach certain things and I can't torque, but definitely get yourself a torque wrench. Um, I, I have three. One is for uh, really light jobs. One is for, you know, anywhere from 30 to, I think, like 180 foot pounds. And then I've got a bigger one that goes all the way up to like 280 or 300 foot pounds. Definitely get yourself a set of adapters. Um, there are cases where you want your 3 8 inch driver socket wrench to handle something, handle a deep well socket that um, that requires a half inch uh, driver to fit into the into the little thing where the where the driver goes. So um, get yourself a set of these. They're they're worth their weight in gold. Uh, box end wrenches are also extremely helpful. So get yourself some of these. Uh, you can get metric and imperial. Get them on Amazon. They're not too expensive. And then finally, um, for for cases where you can't fit your wrench, your I mean uh, your torque wrench, uh, this is really helpful. These are basically uh, kind of like hex sockets. So they've got a, a a male kind of hex fitting that sticks out in different sizes. You can get a metric and imperial. And then what you can do is basically put this on your torque wrench, put this on the end of your torque wrench, take one of those box end wrenches and then um, slide that through one of these hexes and you can get and you can basically it's like an extender for your torque wrench. And there are calculators out there that will tell you 
how much torque to give it now that you've just extended it because the longer the um the longer the lever uh you know it's going to change all the characteristics in terms of what you're going to torque to so i found that i find this very helpful i'm not going to use this in this video but in future videos i i probably will especially when i'm dealing with jeep and um and things like putting back on the the cylinder head all right so now the next thing we're doing right here is we're taking, getting into the CRV. Basically, the first step here in in past videos, we've covered a couple of things. We've covered, um, you know, how to uh, remove the steering knuckle, how to replace all the parts in the steering knuckle, blah blah blah. So the only thing left in my front end CRV wheel wells right now uh, is the strut, the the um, the tie rod ends for the for the rack and pinion steering. And I can't remember what else, but but right now what we're going to do is just for for the project today, what we're going to do is remove the struts, replace the springs, and add in the lift components. In this case, we're going to be looking at a two-inch Honda uh, spacer from um, Honda Rescue Garage. So you got three bolts at the top of the wheel well there, um, and this is the I believe this is the driver's side. You just loosen them. Look, I don't care at this point because I'm throwing everything away um, that's underneath. So I'm just going to let it drop. But if you like your CV axle um, and it's still down there, if you've got other things down there that you that you like, um, you know, be careful. Just reach under, keep a hand down there and uh, and grab it once it comes loose. And then here's the same thing on the passenger side. Uh, I look, it's going to be obvious which side goes where, but I tend to keep them separate so that I don't forget which side is which. But, you know, your mileage may vary. All right, now I've got the, the strut in my garage and I'm putting on those, those spring compressors. The, the important thing here is to, to basically put them on so that they're, they're opposite each other. You want them as close to um, you know 180 degrees opposite each other on each side of the spring uh, as you can get them. And as you compress this, I, do, I never use a power tool. I always use hand um, wrenches like I'm doing right there. And then I do like... I'll do um, 10 turns on one side, 10 turns on the other, equal equal number of turns. And it's a long, slow process, but you're dealing with something here that's fundamentally dangerous. Once you get that thing compressed, if something fails, it'll go off like a cannon. So you always want it pointed like I have it, side to side. Never point the top or the bottom of the strut at you while you're doing this, okay? And in fact, um, if you're not comfortable with this kind of stuff, then don't do it. Take it to a professional mechanic. Uh, so there is some danger here. Yeah, go on YouTube and, and look at videos about spring compressors and dangers and stuff and, and you'll get a you'll get an eyeful of, of what you what you could be potentially facing here. So as you compress this thing, you're gonna finally realize when it's free, the spring will start kind of moving in its place. And what I'm doing right there is basically um uh, for this strut, it had never been taken care of, so the Allen wrench part of it was gone, and I had to use a power tool there, my impact wrench, to um, to remove that top bolt. So normally what you do is put an Allen key or something in the center to keep it from rotating, and then use um, use one of your combination uh, wrenches with the ratchet end to, to loosen that center bolt. Now I've got to loosen the spring and um and i'm and so i can use the spring compressor to put in a new spring so um i'm doing it the same way i put it on 10 turns in one direct on one side 10 turns on the other and then eventually it'll pop loose and you've got all your components of the of the mcpherson strut taken strut taken apart so this is what i'm putting on there i'm putting on their new um kyb front struts uh, I'm also putting on um, a new boot, dust boot, and a new uh, bump stop. You can get these things from Amazon. They're really cheap. I'm putting on new strut mounts. Mine were shot, so I'm putting on Monroe Strutmate strut mounts. They make KYB strut mounts, which are probably better, um, but uh, for me and my purposes, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Monroe ones are perfectly fine. And then I got new, new uh, what you would call top hats. These are basically the upper spring mounts for the, for the front end um, McPherson struts on the CRV. And one, one note of caution here, like as you go through these jobs, take pictures, take lots of pictures, take notes, because you want to put the components on in the same order that you take them off, right? So removing that top bolt, that top bolt's going to go on last. So just, you know, keep in mind where things go because it might be hard to see in these videos where things go. And, you know, you've got to, you got to learn this stuff yourself. So here's a diagram that shows you what the, what the front strut looks like on a, on a Gen 2 Honda CRV. But definitely, you know, if, if you, if a washer comes off in a certain order, remember, you know, in pictures, your iPhone is your best friend. Take pictures and you won't get lost. You won't forget parts, etc. So definitely do that. I do that like religiously. 
All right, next what we're gonna do is um, we've got the new strut here and I've gotta release the, the ties holding it all compressed and stuff. You do not want to nick that rod, the, the, the rod coming out of your new strut because um, you know you could leak oil, you could do all sorts of things. I'm dipping that bump stop in water so that I can get it into the dust boot, which was a really painful and difficult process. Um, but you definitely wanna do that. And that's just one, one thing you can do to make it easier to slide on there. And um, so I'm basically now preparing all the components. Now here's a problem. You can see I'm protecting the, the, the middle rod. This spring I got right here, wrong freaking part. I got this off of car ID or some online um, purchase place, you know, and basically what they told me was that they had front end um, old man emu springs that would give you somewhere like, I don't know, one and three quarters or two inch lift. So I bought them. Well, these are the actually the rear old man emu springs. They don't go on the front. So originally I'd intended to do a, 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 um, a spring lift entirely on this thing. And, uh, and this happened. This is why I went with the Honda Rescue Garage Spacers. And um, I'll do another video later. I eventually went um, bought Dobinson Springs, but they didn't arrive in time to do this job. And the Honda Rescue Garage Spacers were really reasonably priced, so I got those. Um, so I'm going to do a separate video on how to do this with Dobinson Springs, because I've, I've done both on the front end of a, a Gen 2 Honda CRV. So anyway, let's, let's keep going. So here what I've, what I've realized is I've got to put the spring I just took off, I've got to put back on. <laughs> so I'm not feeling very good at this point. And, and I'm just going through the process again of compressing it here. So uh, I may cut this short because you've already seen how to compress it. You put one side on, go 180 degrees opposite and put the other side on. And then I'm, um, I'm test fitting it to the, to the McPherson strut that I just took it off of. And, uh, and we'll keep going with, with that particular job. Now, was this a wasted effort? No, because I did have to change the strut mounts. So I, it wasn't a waste of time. If I didn't have to change the strut mounts, I would have done all this work for nothing. Uh, and putting on the Honda Rescue Garage uh, uh, spacer is actually pretty easy. So anyway, here, I'm just inspecting the components. Now, one thing to keep in mind, there's the strut mount. One thing to keep in mind here is that um, the top rubber, inspect your top rubber um, cushion for the uh, spring. Uh, if it's if it's falling apart and and ripping and everything, get a new one. And the indentation in the upper mount or the upper cushion has to go with the top end of the spring itself. So um, and then there's a notch in the spring uh, upper seat mount that uh, the rubber cushion has to go into. As long as you do all those things, it'll be oriented perfectly correctly and you're good to go. So make sure you you pay attention to that stuff and pay attention really carefully. I'll go into this in more detail in my Dobinson's um, video that I'm, that I'm putting up here soon, probably right after this one. So here I'm trying to get everything back together and what I realize is I haven't compressed the spring down far enough so that I can put the top bolt on um, on the strut. So I, I probably have to um, basically compress the spring a little more, I'm thinking, uh, and, uh, and basically I have to push all the components together more so that I can get that bolt at least, you know, at least four or five threads uh, worth on in the top. So um, here I am re-disassembling, pushing that thing in further, um, I don't know what I'm doing now. I'm probably going away to have a good, uh, another good think looking at instructions. <laughs> oh, this is my first time doing this job. So this is what you could, you could potentially encounter going through this. Um, so just be aware that, you know, it, other videos make it look easy and, uh, it probably is for, for them. Uh, but if you're a new DIYer like I am in this video, then these are the kinds of things and issues you're going to have to work through. Right. So anyway, um, eventually I, I, I get everything back to the point where it's all pushed down just enough that I can get the, I'm, I look, I'm centering everything there carefully. There goes the strut mount and I get everything on carefully just enough so that I can start spinning that bolt down and get it, get it secured. And then I can remove carefully again, remove the, um, the, um, the actual spring compressors on, on each side. So remember, uh, don't use power tools. You'll see videos out there where people use power tools, use your ratchet wrench, Go 10 turns each side at a time, loosen them, you know, loosening it up till it's all, till it's all off. 
Uh, this can be a chore. Getting it off can be difficult, but you're going to just have to work it out. And um, now that that top center bolt is on, it's it's much safer. I mean, it's that 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 spring's not going to go anywhere. These struts and the bolt. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep saying bolt, nut, the springs, the bolt, the nut. Everything was designed to keep that thing together in one piece. So you're 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 perfectly safe. And then you can kind of turn it down until it stops. You're not going to torque it till it gets on the vehicle, but you can turn it down till it stops. Now I'm going to do this. This is the HRG Honda Rescue Garage Spacer Kit. Now I I noticed that in terms of HRG, I went on their website recently. I did this job a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, and they sold at the top of this picture are the two inch front spacers. They sold those separately. Um, I actually wound up buying uh, in separate pieces the um, the adjustable rear control arms. Those are those things off to each side at the top. Uh, the camber bolts down at the bottom off to each side. Those are camber bolts for the front end. And, um, and I bought the spacer separately. You could buy them all separately. I don't think you can anymore. And the two inch spacer kit actually gets associated with the Honda Element on their page. Now, the Honda Element and CRV share a lot of suspension um, components, so it may the, the Element kit may work on the CRV. But if you're going to go this route, definitely contact Honda Rescue Garage and ask them those questions, what you should get, etc. So um, anyway, that's why when you're when you see me doing the the next steps, all I have are the spacers. That's all I really that's all I really needed, and that's what they were selling at the time. So here we go. I've got them at Fierce and Strut back in my uh, bench vise. Uh, I'm just kind of doing a once over. I think I'm painting actually places that I really scraped up down to bare metal and everything. I'm painting it with POR just to try and protect it from from the elements a little longer than it, than otherwise would be protected. This this part is really really simple. You can't make a mistake here. Essentially there are three kind of studs sticking up off of your strut mount. And what you're going to do is take the spacers and um and you're going to place those on top um, and I'm marking different positions here so that I know where the McPherson strut goes once I put it back on the vehicle but you're gonna put the spacer on top um, on those those uh, studs and you may have to go to a hardware store to get the actual nuts and bolts to go with these spacers I don't know what Honda Rescue Garage is doing at this point I think I've just dropped one of the nuts that I had and now I'm frantically looking for it down down there um, in my messy workspace but I find it put the nuts on and um, and then so you're supposed to torque it down to whatever the to whatever the top nut torque specs are for the Honda CRV on the struts where they go into the wheel well in my case this is one case where I did not use a torque wrench I just tightened those suckers really really tight and they never came loose like never um, I don't think I even put thread lock on here uh, so that was very very secure never had a problem with these uh, the ride did seem a little stiffer than normal but you know whatever that is literally um, all you have to do at this point to to take off your struts, compress the springs, remove those, um, replace your strut mounts at the top, and um, and put on the Honda Rescue Garage spacers. One word about strut mounts: if you're having clunking noises from the front and it's not coming from any of the other steering components, get somebody in the steering uh, uh, behind the wheel, behind the steering wheel, turn on the car, and while they turn the wheel back and forth. Watch the top of your strut mounts uh, because I've had cases where it didn't look like they were ripped. They looked perfectly fine. But as soon as somebody was turning the wheels back and forth under power, um, you could see how they were like ripped halfway apart across the top where the bushings are and stuff. So um, definitely something to check out if you're getting clunking noises from the front end. Anyway, that's it. Hope, hope this video was helpful in terms of taking the next step on restoring your CRV. Doc out. Oh, you made it to the end. That's awesome. Listen, I'm Doc. Uh, I'm the one who's, you know, the voice behind these videos. And I really appreciate you taking the time to actually watch the whole thing. That's fantastic. If you've got time, if you want to, if you like the video, hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the bell button so you, you know, you get notified of new videos when I put them up. I'm going to try and do one a week. And I do, I'm going to do a bunch of Instagram stuff. So make sure you follow me there and on Twitter. Uh, Instagram's going to be the shorter stuff. I don't have any merchandise yet. I plan, I'm planning to as the channel grows. If I succeed, I'll get some merch. For now, if you really want to help me in another way, you like these videos enough, I'm going to put links to my books in the description of the video. I'm a science fiction author in my, in my spare time as well. So I do, <laughs> I'm juggling a lot of balls. But anyway, I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you at the next one. Hey, do me a favor and turn this junk off. I, I, I don't know how to deal with tech.